I would like to start my remark by appreciating the UNECA and the World Bank Group, who are both very important partners of Ethiopia for organizing these timely deliberations. It's very reassuring to witness the focus of this workshop on two important subjects that developing countries such as Ethiopia regularly grapple with in their policy discourse, jobs and transformation. While we are focusing on how to create millions of jobs each year due to the high rate of unemployment in both rural and urban areas, it's equally critical to use policy to guide the types of jobs created. Ethiopia has been able to sustain rapid growth for more than a decade and a half, which was accompanied by reducing by half the number of people living below the poverty line. A concern for policy making in Ethiopia continues to be the inability to create adequate quality jobs. More recent surveys or results also reveal that while urban unemployment showed a decreasing trend, Overall unemployment has not been declining in much uh, in recent years. The government of Ethiopia has been implementing strategies that focus on job creation, being fully cognizant that to create jobs there needs to be a structural transformation from low productive sectors to high productive sectors. More recently, the government is also targeting enhanced private sector participation as well as reforms that increase the competitiveness of the economy as additional areas for improving the environment for job creation. Ethiopia is currently in the process of opening up the ICT sector to enable attract private investment, increase competitiveness of the economy and build a digital economy. As we have seen in many countries, the IT sector has huge potential to create ample opportunities for the youth employment by creating technological platforms and attracting innovators, entrepreneurs and job creators. We look forward to, to the support from the UNDCA and the World Bank Group by mobilizing expertise and resources to uh, bring about the needed structural change in the economy and help us tackle the challenge we are facing to create quality jobs for our population. The question around jobs and economic transformation is one that I think almost every leader on the continent is worrying about. When we look at GDP per capita, we actually see that there's more Africans falling into poverty and, and the numbers on our GDP per capita on average are dropping. Before it used to be India that was the country with the largest number of poor people, it has moved to the continent. We have the honor now of hosting the country with the largest number of poor people. The digital economy today is going to be about 11 trillion and you know 15.5% of global GDP. So again, when we talk about jobs and we start looking at where, is, where are the growth parts of the economies of, our, of, the, of the globe, clearly digital is one space where if we could take some bit of that 15.5% of GDP onto the continent, we will be providing a solutions for the jobs problem. Today, Africa imports about $14.7 billion of pharmaceutical products from outside the continent. But it's $14.7 billion and almost 6 million jobs if we were to begin to produce and sell some of these commodities on the continent. And that is the story behind the CFTA. It's not just talking about open markets. It's talking really about creating jobs. It's talking about how we begin to diversify our respective economies, how we include African economies in global value chains. Being able to have access to concessional financing remains an important part of the development architecture for many of our countries. Glad to be here in Ethiopia and also at the United Nations Economic Commission for Africa for this very important workshop. Ethiopia is the largest borrower from IDA and uh, we are very glad to have been a, a partner for Ethiopia uh, through its development and reform processes. The, the need for more and better jobs remains a top development priority. The challenges are daunting. Over the next decade, close to 600 million people will be looking for jobs, mostly in the world's poorest countries. South Asia alone will need to create more than 13 million jobs every year to keep pace with its demographics. In Sub-Saharan Africa, the challenge will be even greater. 15 million jobs will need to be created each year. Failing to deliver good jobs for the growing youth population not only risks squandering the demographic dividend, 
but also raises significant social risks, contributing to fragility and driving young people to migrate uh, in search of better opportunities. Here in Ethiopia, for, in, for example, we have a country program with a portfolio of 39 operations with a total of $11 billion, as well as extensive advisory and analytical support. Much of our support is focused on promoting structural and economic transformation through increased productivity. Our recent $1.2 billion development policy financing will provide substantive support to the government's regulatory reforms and infrastructure development to improve its investment climate and advance the government's ambitious reform efforts. We want to hear from you what you see happening on the continent and what are the burning issues that we need to address. I look forward also to hearing the perspectives from my private sector friends uh, who are here in the room today, together with our IFC colleagues. Ultimately, you are the ones who actually create jobs and lead the economic transformation. You certainly know economists barely agree on anything. But there is one thing for more than six decades economists have agreed upon. It's that uh, industrialization is the cornerstone of economic development. Sans se préoccuper de la nécessité de moderniser le monde rural. 20 years ago, when we were talking about industrialization, the bank did not seem to have any appetite for listening to that kind of, 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 of thought process. Now, the only reason why I'm raising this is not to be negative, but to, to advise the bank also to do an internal introspection about certain myths that have been, I would say, uh, present, you know, in terms of their own institutional culture. It's very important because you are putting a lot of resources to support, I can talk about Africa, and yet if you look at the, the dividend from what you've done, it shows that clearly there have been serious challenges along the way in terms of how we have basically uh, 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 captured the narrative. You know, some of these myths, I mean, goes back to the old uh, structure adjustment uh, uh, days when, and it still continues, when the emphasis on macroeconomic stabilization seems to be the end, uh, seems to be seen as an end in itself, rather than as a means to an end. Because I'm saying this so that whilst the macro stabilization program is a necessary condition, we are all beginning to realize that it's not, an, it's not a sufficient condition. And in fact, if it is not accompanied by uh, economic transformation, then you actually even lose uh, track of the stabilization program. You know, this focus on studies and uh, you know, research, it has to be reduced. It takes time, it takes resources. Let's go direct and get the job done. Particularly when we know that uh, when it's transformation, it's action and not uh, just discussions. I think that the focus on country level strategies, which you pointed out, I think is in order because different countries have different uh, requirements. If we are serious about economic transformation, then you guys need to go find some big money to put behind this whole exercise. Because it's not this cosmetic, you know, marginal resources that uh, if you are ready to get into transformation and you want it to impact on Africa, it's a lot of money. So you have to think about that. Integrated approaches. Again, I'm happy that it is already a pillar of what you are seeking to do. But the question is, how are you going to achieve but we know all development partners, everybody wants to uh, basically incubate their thoughts. And then at the country level, we are flooded with different partners trying to kind of uh, introduce different angles of the same thing. You know, different partners having different transformation uh, projects. You know.
I think that maybe you need to do a better job at this coordination. But I'm happy that you've identified it. Transformation will be led by government only in terms of providing the strategic direction. But the actual uh, uh, change agents, I think it's always the private sector. Transforming our economies require differentiated approach based on the local context and the realities on the ground. Industrialization, services, and the job creation will only happen when we have a strong private sector which is delivering through an enabling business environment. This is a priority for Ethiopia, and the government is working toward this improving comprehensively its business environment. We must leverage technology and digitization as an important enabler for value addition. Given the level of challenges and the global developments, IDA remains an important instrument in support of our development and the meeting sustainable development goals.